Roma, Papa Roger, Park 1200, radio services. Terminate, please change to wipe Unicom 135.0 approved. Good day. Good night, Roger. You can proceed. In the early 1930s, a promising new idea gained the interest of multiple airline executives. One that could build upon the progress already made within the aviation industry and better the flight experience for passengers. At the time, the Boeing Aircraft Company was making good money off their Boeing Model 247 airplane, one of the first all-metal fuselage airliners to take to the skies, and the demand for the 247 would only continue to grow, with the primary customer being United Airlines, having an order for 60 aircraft. One of United's transcontinental competitors, TWA, had also had an order for the 247, but would end up having to wait for the completion of United's orders before receiving any of their own planes. Not wanting to wait for the completion of the 60 aircraft, Transcontinental and Western Airlines conversed closely with the Douglas Aircraft Company's founder, Donald Douglas, to manufacture an aircraft that would be a direct competitor to the Boeing 247, which would lead to the creation of the Douglas Commercial or DC model aircraft. The DC-1, the first civilian transport, was created in 1933, with the DC-2 following in 1934. In full production, both airplanes were largely successful and met the needs of TWA to compete with the Model 247. However, Donald Douglas felt that there was room for improvement, which would lead to the creation of the Douglas DC-3. The result of a marathon telephone call between American Airlines CEO C.R. Smith and Donald Douglas, the DC-3 was created to meet the need for a sleeper aircraft. With the present DC-1 and DC-2s too narrow to place two side-by-side -side berths, Donald Douglas reluctantly agreed to design a new aircraft only after he was informed of American Airlines' proposal to purchase 20 of these aircraft. Over the span of two years, a team led by engineer Arthur E. Raymond will create a prototype aircraft entitled the Douglas Sleeper Transport which first flew on December 17th of 1935, which just happened to be the 32nd anniversary of the Wrights brothers' first flight at Kitty Hawk. The cabin itself was 92 inches wide, 26 inches wider than its predecessor aircraft, the DC-2. The Douglas Sleeper Transport could be configured with 14 to 16 sleeping berths, and the non-sleeper configuration with 21 seats would be given the designation of the DC-3. Although there was no prototype DC-3, the first DC-3 rolled out of the production line after the completion of seven DSTs. Although no one knew it at the time, the Douglas DC-3 would pave the way for future airplanes and become one of the most successful airliners in aviation history. Completion of American Airlines' order for the Douglas Sleeper transports in DC-3s, the DC-3 program quickly gained attention and popularized commercial air travel in the United States, and established a new form of luxury when it came to travel. The DC-3 also set new speed records for commercial travel, with the ability to complete an eastward transcontinental flight in 15 hours with three stops for refueling, or 17 and a half hours westward against the wind. Just a few years earlier, such speeds and distances would have seemed impossible for airplanes, with many trips being broken into small hops during the day and transcontinental train trips during the night. Not only could the new DC-3 fly faster and farther than earlier aircraft of its time, but the flight in general was much smoother, with less susceptibility to turbulence while in flight. A variety of radial engines were offered for the DC-3, with the main two engine types being the Wright R1820 Cyclone 9 engines or the 14-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R1830 Twin Wasp. When it comes to the flight history of the DC-3, the first civilian flight took place on June 26, 1936, with the inaugural flights for American Airlines, which operated simultaneously from Chicago, Illinois and Newburgh, New Jersey. Following the lead of American Airlines, Many of the other early U.S. airlines like United, TWA, Eastern, and Delta ordered a combined total of about 400 DC-3s. 
the early fleets comprised of DC-3s paved the way for the modern American air travel industry, which would in due time replace the need for trains for long distance travel in the US. Although it took a little bit of time, the DC-2 would gain popularity in Europe and Asia, with KLM Royal Dutch Airlines receiving its first DC-3 in 1936, which replaced their DC-2 which operated their service from Batavia, which is now Jakarta, to Sydney, which is at the time the world's longest scheduled flight. KLM would end up purchasing a total of 23 DC-3s prior to war breaking out in Europe. During the war, the efforts of the Douglas Aircraft Company transitioned from commercial airliners to military cargo planes and troop transport, which leads to the next part of the story of the DC-3. Efforts to find a new military transport aircraft to replace the aging airplane relics of the First World War became a major priority for the Allied countries at the start of World War II, with many of the Allied countries being overwhelmed by the initial bombings from Nazi Germany at the beginning of the war, there were limited resources to create a brand new transport aircraft from the drawing board. Thus, countries like Great Britain and France began the search to find an already operating airplane that could be easily converted to meet their needs. Thus, the Allied forces would request a solution from their American counterparts. Across the ocean, the Douglas Aircraft Company was already in the process of designing new military aircraft when approached by France and Great Britain. But with the shortage of time that it needed to design and develop a new aircraft, Douglas scratched their work and instead worked diligently towards the conversion of civilian DC-3s into military specifications. The first military designation given to a DC-3 was that of the C-53 Skytrooper. The design of the C-53 was based off the DC-3, but was given more powerful engines. After the start of its production in 1941, only 380 C-53s would roll off the assembly line at the Douglas factories, largely in part because its sister aircraft, the C-47, was found to be more versatile for the needs of the Allied forces. The C-47 featured upgraded 14-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R1830 twin wasp engines, reinforced flooring, an added cargo door, and a hoist attachment. The C-47 went by many names and designations depending on the country and branch of service it was developed for. The U.S. Army and Air Force's C-47 were designated the C-47 Skytrain, whereas the Royal Air Force, Royal Australian Air Force, Royal Canadian Air Force's C-47 carried the nickname Dakota. The United States Navy also had their own specification of the C-47, known as the R-4Ds, which were given more powerful Wright R-1820 Cyclone engines. The C-47 was vital in the success of the Allied forces during World War II, especially after the United States joined the war on December 7, 1941, succeeding the attacks of Pearl Harbor. The C-47 and any of its military variants allowed for essential cargo to be transported at a rate never seen before. It would have one of the highest capacities for carrying both soldiers and medical patients and nurses. One of the largest impacts that the C-47s and C-53s had on the war can be seen during D-Day, on June 6, 1944 in Normandy, France, when hundreds of C-47s and C-53s flew into Normandy, France, some carrying soldiers for battle, others dropping bombs into Nazi-occupied areas. D-Day was a turning point in the war, and it wouldn't have been possible without the usage of the C-47 and C-53. Through the usage of the C-47, both before and during D-Day, the Allied troops gained an advantage over the Axis powers, which would drastically change the tide of the war. Concluding the end of World War II on September 2nd of 1945, it was said that more than 10,000 US military variants of the DC-3 had been constructed. The peak of production took place in 1944, when 4,953 aircraft would be delivered for usage during the war. Certified military licensed copies of the DC-3 were also constructed in the Soviet Union and Japan, with 4,937 Lysenov Li-2s being constructed during the war, and used by the Soviet Union to also help claim victory during World War II. 
After the war, many DC-3s and C-47s stayed in service with the United States Air Force, which operated them during the Vietnam War, and in the United States Air Force's Strategic Air Command from 1946 through 1967. The U.S. Air Force's 6th Special Operations Squadron also flew the C-47 until recently retiring in 2008. Thousands of cheap X military DC-3s became available for civilian use, and many were converted back into commercial airliners. Cubana de Aviación flew the DC-3 from Havana to Miami in 1945, making them the first Latin American airline to offer a scheduled service to Miami out of Havana. Cubana also used DC-3s on some domestic routes well into the 1960s. Many other military variants of the DC-3 would continue in service until the early 2000s in countries like South Africa and Pakistan. Some C-47 Skytrains are still in active military duty presently in the South American countries of Colombia and El Salvador. Later on, Douglas would develop an improved version of the DC-3, the DC-3S, or better well known as the Super DC-3. The Super DC-3 would not only have more power and a greater cargo capacity, but an improved wing. However, due to surplus aircraft available for cheap, they failed to sell well in the civil and commercial aviation markets, with only five ending up being delivered, three of them to Capital Airlines. A number of aircraft companies made to design a replacement for the Douglas DC-3 over the next three decades, which would include the Fokker F-27 Friendship, which would be largely successful. But in the end, no single type could match the reliability and rugged terrain, the versatility, and the overall economy of the DC-3. The DC-3 will remain a significant part of air transportation systems well into the mid-1970s. In more recent years, the DC-3 has also seen large success within many industries, including those of cargo transport, heritage flights, and air shows. A largely popular aviation TV show called Ice Pilots displayed the usage of vintage DC-3s at Buffalo Airlines, an aviation company in the Canadian Northwest Territories. One of the main characters in this show, Mikey McBrien, also gained popularity through his promotion of vintage DC-3s and C-47s on his social media, YouTube channel, and his recent Plane Saver series, where he and his team restored a C-47 that flew in the original D-Day to later fly in a D-Day reenactment during its 75th anniversary. Although the fleet at Buffalo Airlines consists of multiple different types of aircraft, a fraction of their fleet consists of seven DC-3s, with one presently flying and six that could be made operational, and one Basler BT-67 on lease. To continue sharing more recent uses of the DC-3, the United States Forest Service used the DC-3 for smoke jumping and general transportation until the last airplane was retired in December 2015. Many aviation companies have also had recent successes in the conversion of DC-3s into turboprop airplanes. One of the most notable turboprop conversion companies for DC-3s is that of Basler Turbo Conversion, based in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. At Basler, over the span of thousands of hours, they take a vintage DC-3 and lengthen the fuselage, strengthen the cabin, wings and tail, place brand new state-of-art avionics inside the cockpit, and give the plane new Pratt & Whitney PT-6A 67R engines, turning it into a BT-67. Through this process, the lifespan of the original DC-3 is lengthened immensely, allowing it to fly efficiently for a much longer time into the future. Despite its age, the DC-3 still acts as a popular aircraft within the aviation sector for multiple purposes, and it will continue to outlive many of the other aircraft of its time. Without the DC-3, the modern aviation world we know today wouldn't be the same. From its transforming commercial aviation to turning the tide of World War II, the DC-3 is nothing short of an astounding feat of engineering and ingenuity. Tell us what you think of the DC-3 in the comment section below, and how many more years you think it will last. We would like to thank Mikey McBride for collaborating with us on today's video, by providing us with information on DC-3s, and sharing videos that were used in the video. Go check out his YouTube channel which contains amazing aviation content. His YouTube and social media accounts are linked below in the description. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's episode of our Aviation History series. If you have any ideas for what the next episode should be about, please comment it down below and we'd be happy to make a video about it. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that thumbs up button and to stay updated with all the world of aviation has to offer, subscribe to our channel and tap the bell icon to be notified whenever we post a new video. If you are interested in following us on other platforms, you can use the listed handles on the screen or in the description below as well. 
We're glad you chose to fly with us today, and we hope you join us again soon on Forward Aviation. Yeah.